We have um, a special guest, Henry Iwayao. When it comes to sport, administrator, administrative work, and when it comes to directing sport, and when it comes to football scouts and all that has to do with sport, there's one man you need to go to, and that man is my guest today. Henry Iwayao, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Mudashi, too. Yeah, so, um, we, we are going to talk about um, Saudi Arabia football revolution. Mm. Just from a few weeks ago, we know that... Um, Ronaldo has joined the Saudi Arabia club. Mm. We also know that um, Golon Kante, Golon Kante mm. Benzema, and all these um, wonderful um, footballers um, mm. will be joining one or two clubs in Saudi Arabia. And we mm. told that the government of Saudi Arabia has decided to ensure that um, football, um, football in Saudi Arabia become that of the Premier League. And also that there will be bidding for the 2030 World Cup and 2034 World Cup. Mm. This is something interesting. Though Messi rejected an offer to be in Saudi Arabia. Mm. But what, what's this all about? Yeah, it, it's complete revolution. Mm. Okay, it's complete revolution in the sense that um, this is the first time uh, we are seeing a country so determined uh, to make sure that um, there is a sell greatly and also to expand, you know, their um, uh, investment uh, structure. Uh, this is also not just um, uh, relying solely on oil and gas. They have expanded, especially in sports, uh, in um, energy, and so many things. And uh, we are not surprised to see uh, Saudi, you know, doing this kind of thing. They have um, uh, brought out this sports differently not just only football anywhere they have done it with formula one and uh, they have also invested even in golf uh, spend about uh, two point something uh, billion dollars uh, just for golf and um, for uh, football generally this uh, they have pulled out what it used to be you know uh, leaving it to the uh, public investment uh, fund Okay, uh, which is called the uh, PIF of uh, Saudi Arabia. So they have expanded it in a way that uh, they invested over six hundred uh, uh, billion dollars. Hmm. So this has spread. You know that is why you are seeing we have uh, four major clubs hmm. that they have they are interested in to start with. Hmm. Uh, uh, according to them, this is just a startup, not like uh, uh, we are going to tie down no, with okay. these four. four okay. Clubs. So you have uh, at uh, at uh, tell we have uh, Al Nasser oh, yeah. and all that. So you can see those four clubs. You know they have invested so much on them, and you can see uh, like what you just said. You said the uh, Messi is not part of it; is rejected. There's nothing like that. There is an offer hmm. which is called promotional offer, hmm. but that will come later next year, okay. 2024. Okay. So uh, Messi will still be there. Hmm. Apart from those you just mentioned, these ones will be there. You know, actually the difference with what Saudi Arabia is doing and what uh, China in the has past. been trying to do in the past, the difference is so clear. Hmm. The difference is so clear. We can see uh, them uh, having, though we have some of these players, maybe they will retire soon. Some have some years to stay before they retire. You know, a lot of people will ask so many questions. Why are we having uh, this now? Why is it not uh, uh, them coming so fresh? At that point. You know, but you can look at it. You can see that these are exceptional players. These are champions. These are legends. Mm. Okay. They are bringing them into this uh, championship and them promoting, uh, using them to promote this sports. Mm. And as well, you can see it's not only uh, internally, not mm. in only internal investment. Okay. This investment also spread globally. Mm. You can see what they did in 2021 with uh, Newcastle. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, and you can do. see what is happening with Newcastle. Newcastle, you know, with um, uh, Liverpool, now, you know, there is a bridge and the kind of... Uh, you can see the investment. And the investment is paying. So these are the things, those who studied what we call post um, business management, we understand what Saudi is doing mm. and where they are heading to. Okay. So it's a big investment, okay. a very big one. Uh, you're a football scout. Yes. Are you going to advise 
a young lad mm. with all the money that I should start with a club in Saudi Arabia because that might be the focus mm. of football in the next than five or two years. It's mm. even going to be the focus because mm. by the time you have Nkolonkate, Benzema mm. and the rest of them over there, mm. that means we are going to get a platform where we're we'll watching Saudi Arabia football. Mm. But if a young lad is coming into football mm. as a football scout, mm. do you think it's advisable mm. to, to be part of that? You see, uh, we have to be sincere with what is happening. Mm. You know, we have to project the future well and those who can really uh, uh, see clearly mm. with the perspective of things will tell you that in a few years' time, mm. a lot will be happening with Saudi Arabia in this sports. Mm. Okay? Now, not about advising uh, go to Saudi or go to um, England. Uh, England. Okay? I will advise you, wherever it comes and you see the light, you go. Mm. But at the same time, I will advise you, you, because things are happening now. You know, the way we are seeing it, you know, the, it gradually, a lot is going to happen in Saudi. Mm. A lot is going to happen because the investment, and these, these people, they are ready to spend the money. So, the focus is gradually shifting there. Mm. In, few, uh, in, in, few, in few years' time, we are going to see the reality. We we'll see players who are eager to take the contract coming from Saudi than contracts that are coming from England. Mm. So it will gradually go so because um, the investment, you know, they are investing every day and the facilities are there, wonderful mm. facilities. So, you know, when you have to invest in things like this, they look at promotion, okay? They will look at uh, broadcasting, they look at the fan base and all that. So you can see the fan base as well, you know, since uh, Ron we have Ronaldo there, you can see a lot of people yeah, who that's who, it. Yeah, who are fanatics of uh, Ronaldo, mm. you know, they, they, they are out there watching his game and you can see it growing faster, mm. as you can imagine. Mm. So when we talk about fan base, it's not just about Africa, it's not just about Europe. We still have the Asians, we have the, uh, the, the Australians, we have the Middle East. And the focus is gradually shifting. Yeah, and um, to, to, to say to that, um, we know that um, um, Ronaldo's club, Al Nazar, um, Instagram was 800,000 um, um, subscriber, if I use mm. that word, mm. followership. And after Ronaldo came in, we had millions of followership um, coming to that. Mm. Now, there's an issue as is, is there anything behind because you know most times we have a project like that mm. we are also told that Saudi Arabia is bidding for the World Cup in 2030 mm. in 2034 mm. now we know in the past we have China did something similar mm. and um, nobody's going to China right now mm. what do you think my do you think there will be a difference mm. between what China has done in the past, mm. where we had the likes of Chelsea former player, I want that kid, um, Oscar mm. going there. Mm. We had um, other players, Ork, that's Brazilian, also going there. How sure are you that this will succeed? Yeah, you see, the, the China, China try as much as they can to individualize the whole process. Mm. So that is the difference between what Saudi is doing and what China did, or what China is still doing. Mm. So um, for me, it is not the same thing. Mm. These people, they invest. And not just investing, you can see the, you know, China is coming with promotion as well, just like they are coming with promotion as well. But these people, they are not just there. You can see how they were able to invest outside uh, 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 the Saudi. Mm. Okay? So but, they are going global but with Newcastle. And there's still, there's still an eye to another club. Mm. So they, they are not just like China. The Chinese, you know, these people have also studied the whole thing. They studied how China is doing their thing and as well what they feel that they have to change, you know. They need to change the narrative of how China is operating mm. the whole thing and all that. So for China, um, yes, we, we hear of a lot of people saying when you want to retire, you just go to China. Mm. But I'm not going to see, I'm not seeing Saudi, Saudi Arabia, Arabia as a place for retirement. A place for retirement. Mm. We may have people who are likely going to retire, retire soon, them. but yes, it's for the promotional uh, 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 tendency for promoting this league. Mm. So the, the, don't forget, the, one of the aim is to make sure that the Saudi league become one of, uh, one of I mean, uh, one of the 10 best league in, in the, the world. world. Mm. 
So that is one of the aim. And they, are at, they have the resources, they have what it takes to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So it's not like the China. The China, you know, normally more like a close uh, thing, you know, they are just doing their thing. And uh, you hardly see outsiders, you know, getting involved much. But here, these people are free. And uh, I can tell you, there is so much investment and there is so much gain. Yeah, and this is just to tell our viewers that this is not just about um, football alone. Yes. Because in the past, um, the rematch between boxing, mm. I think we had the rematch between Andy Ruz and um, Anthony Joshua yes. in Saudi Arabia. Mm. So I think it's a, 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 the old thing has to do with sport management. Yeah, I, I, I told you earlier, I mentioned Formula One, I mentioned golf, I told you yes. about two, two point something billion have been invested just for golf. And the same thing have happened with uh, Formula One. It have also happened with boxing, boxing and so many uh, sports. So it's not just football alone. But what we are seeing, this revolution uh, in sports, you know, the, the idea of bringing, you know, we feel like, oh, all this thing is just for Europe. It's just La Liga and Premier League just happening. You know. It's only in Europe. Yeah, it's only in Europe. But then you can see what is happening. They have the business idea. They have the uh, the idea. I mean, they, they they have all it takes to make it happen. Mm. The methodology, the philosophy, everything is on ground, and they are gradually doing it. And the, uh, Saudi are people that when they fix their mind to do something, money is not that a problem. I know yes, that money is not a problem. As I told you, the investment is not just for the oil and gas. Mm. They want to invest in other sectors, mm. and this is what we are seeing. Let's get up, come back home. Our continent, mm. Africa. What, what, what can Africa learn mm. from this revolution going on? Mm. In, I'm not saying what uh, we should replicate or we should do. Mm. What, what are we to learn? Mm. Is it still the same to tell us that football is not about winning competitions? Mm. That football is about business? Tell mm. us what our continent. You've been to Indonesia. Mm. You've been to many African countries. Mm. You've taken young lads. You've done all this with regards to football. Mm. Tell us what can your continent, our continent, mm. Africa, learn from this? Yeah, Africa, we are not dull people. Mm. And we are not dumbs. Mm. I can say that anywhere. We have the brain. And when you even look at the Saudi, um, what Saudi is doing now, and even in, in other countries, you will still find an African man there the contributing, yes, contributing, yes, in the board, yeah. contributing. You will still find an African man. But the problem we have is the modus operandi, mm. you know, the way we do things, you know, uh, 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 in a way that it looks as if more like we must bring in corruption, we must bring in nepotism, we must bring in all sorts of nonsense around mm. it. Yes. That is the problem we are having. Mm. The moment we remove our mind from there, will be able to do a lot of things. So for us, you know, Africa can be able to replicate some of these things. The resources, we have it. Mm. But who will release these things? Mm. Okay, that's the problem. So you can see how we run administratively, how some of us are doing things in various countries and all that. So it's, it, it calls for, I mean, it, it, it calls for serious attention. With, with this, can we say, mm. We have reports in the past that um, the chairman of Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, mm. um, said in the past that um, he wants to have a shares or buy over Arsenal Football Club of England. Mm. Do you think if men like that, mm. billionaires, millionaires, should invest in the clubs we have here, mm. the Aimbas, the Lobby Stars, mm. do you think that's the beginning of another? Football revolution. Yeah, in the that, that, is, that is a first start, but not just investing. You need to also watch your investment. Hmm. Okay? You need to also watch your investment. You need to know the kind of people who are managing your investment. You, you need, need to, to know, know the environment. Yes, you need to look at everything. You, I mean, whatever structure they're bringing, you need to look at it very well. And not just looking at it, the follow up is important. Hmm. You know, it's not just about investment. Yes, I agree with you 100%. If we have private investors, the billionaires, the so-called uh, who is who, who in Africa, coming in to invest, mm. that will make a lot of sense, taking over some of these uh, clubs. But then, those who will manage it is also important. Mm. And then, you look also at the laws, the rules. The guides. The, the guides. Mm. You know, the regulation mm. of uh, the bodies managing these uh, people or managing these institutions or clubs, we look at them 
How, when they bring policies, is it really going the way it's supposed to be? So when we look at all these things, you know, it will help a lot. Whereby we won't have, we won't have time to bribe officials. Hmm. We won't have time to uh, be the one to host an official. You see, these are ways of enticing people. Whereby they said, uh, uh, okay, the official coming to your house to officiate. He's, you are the one to take care of the official. Hmm. You know, this is bringing all sorts of rubbish. So there are things they need to change. Not just putting it in a book. Oh. There should be proper follow up so i call I, I will call for investors to truly come in but then when you invest you have to watch your money mm. and know where your money is going to know those who is who is going to be involved in managing the affairs of um, your club yes see, see, see on this um, issue because sam is no longer our companion now yeah. that left us some minutes behind mm. and uh, we we want to see what saudi arabia will see is mm. it a wake-up call for other countries, because Europe has always been Europe when it comes to football. Mm. Now the Asia, Saudi Arabia, and others are mm. waking up. Mm. What what will be the benefit uh, for uh, a lot of other people? It, it, it's, it's a wake up call, and I wish they will wake up early, mm. not sleeping so deep. I see a lot of people in England coming to Saudi to watch games. Definitely. Okay, I see a lot of people there going there to watch game without them even going, I mean, going to nearby stadium to watch. Mm. So it's a big, it's a serious one. They are putting their money, they are putting their resources, and they are serious. They are not sleeping. So they, they have serious plan. So very soon after this promotional fees, we are likely going to see them getting serious. Uh, talented players okay. into their clubs. And I don't see them limiting themselves to these four clubs. Okay. Like in China, it's just many clubs. They pick four. And it's just the promotional stage. The next thing, you will see a lot of clubs and not just a lot of clubs. The league will become so strong and there will be so much money. People will be fighting to go to Saudi to play. I think our problem... When we say our problem, the continent's problem is lack of infrastructure. Mm. If even if the federal government on FGR decide that they'll pick four clubs mm. and invest money into those four mm. clubs and it should attract African players, mm. I think that is jumping the gun because we don't even have infrastructure mm. ready made that can do all those you things. You see, sometimes we carry a lot of things. You know, you go out there, you see so many, not by number. Sometimes it's not by number. You're, you're making it multitude. But Carry what you can, carry the load you can be able to, I mean, leave the load you can be able to carry, you mm -hmm. know. So it, it, it makes a lot of sense from your perspective if the federal government can pick up some clubs and say, okay, this is what is going to happen. And I can tell you, fan base is not our problem. People are ready to support if they see that they are actually serious. I can't go to a, a match, I mean, a tournament, I know for sure that uh, possibly this is the people hosting mm. the match and they are likely going to win because one way or the other they have they're, they're the home teams. So I can't go and watch such game because already I predicted this, this score line and I know that it's surely going to happen that way. Okay. Now, finally, on, on the show, before I let you go, because there'll be so much, because we are studying the situation. Yeah. We are studying the situation. Like you said, this is a promotional phase. Let's see mm. what the next phase will. Now, th does this call, I'll, I'll come back a little bit, because I just imagine that um, this should be Nigeria mm. doing this. I imagine this should be Ghana doing this. Mm. I also wish the best for our continent, mm. Africa, which majority of the talent we have goes over there. Mm. Now, do you think there's some a policy by the default um, LMC, the League Manager Complaint, under Unduka Irabo, mm. said that there be some community ownership of football club, mm. um, but that didn't see the light of the clay. Do you advise that um, government should hands off football clubs in the country? Kanu Pillars shouldn't be the owners of Kanu Pillars. Mm. Kanu State Government shouldn't be owner of Kanu Pillars. Abia State Government should be the owner of Abia and Ayimba mm. and the rest of them. Can, can you, do you think that would be the first step if government should hands off football? Uh, not about uh, hands off uh, football uh, totally. I, I don't as I expect that from them. And uh, I rather encourage them to put more fund 
watch the phone, okay, and stop politicalizing uh, the whole process, okay? Politicalizing our sports, especially mm. football, is uncalled for. It's not necessary. Yeah. So this is this has been a, one of the problems. Yeah. So if they can be sincere to be able to manage uh, our our club, also manage the body that is managing this sports, that will make a lot of sense. So um, uh, uh, for me, it's not about hands government and so forth. Yeah, because but how about the be private sectors to really? Yeah, if private sectors are willing to come because we are talking about the uh, uh, the uh, uh, what's it called the money muscles. Yes, money so if, yeah, if, if they can come in and do the necessary thing, that would be okay. Lastly, which other players are you expecting to be joined this work? We know that um, Karim Benzema, N'Golo mm. Kante, Wilfred Israel, and others. We're hoping that Messi. Do you think Messi took the right decision not to join this? Uh, yes, he took the right decision, um, and uh, I like him picking the offer for promotional uh, aspect next year. Yeah, okay. uh, it will be a promotional contract, so um, uh, for me, it's better for him to finish up a bit, you know, within that. Um, and you think um, America, the MLS, also is trying to copy that? Because yeah, they tried in the past. <laughs> in they the tried past. in the past, but at a the time they were a bit weak. Mm. So I don't know what happened they, when they pick up. Uh, uh, people like, like uh, uh, John jo um, uh, Owen Jono and so M many others. Uh, yeah, so they pick up even uh, the co uh, Chelsea uh, uh, current coach. Uh, I mean, is it um, John Terry? John Terry at the time. Also have uh, so, our own uh, Buffett Martin. Uh, yes, yeah, so it, it, they try to sometimes is copying and sometimes is uh, consistency. You know, uh, making sure you concretize the whole thing. So, but for Saudi, it's a country that pick up a little desert and turn it into yeah, a big, a big uh, I mean, a, a mega and a world-class city within a few years. So there's nothing they can do. Thank you very much, yeah. uh, everyone. Yeah, well, thank you for your objectivity and in-depth analysis. We'll still be talking on this, but let's yeah. just stay, follow the stories as it goes day by day. Yeah. Thank you very much once again. Thank you so much, Modashitu. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. That's Iwan Yang, who is a sport director and administrator of many um, um, executions of projects when it comes to football he has in Nigeria and also across um, the globe. That's all we take on today's program. Thank you for joining. Same time, um, tomorrow, we'll be giving you all what you need to know in the world of sport. I'm Modashitu. Thanks for watching.